at some of our special senses. Um, somatic were your ones that are found all over. Special senses have special jobs. So special senses are associated with large, complex structures, your ear, your eyes, your nose. And they include smell, which we'll do to talk about today, taste, hearing, equilibrium, balance, and sight. So your ears are not only responsible for hearing, they're also very important for equilibrium. But today we're going to start with smell. So olfactory is a scientific name for, or olfaction even, is smelling. So olfactory receptors and taste receptors are chemoreceptors. They pick up chemicals. So when you're smelling perfume, the odor that you smell is a chemical. Uh, when you're tasting the food, you're tasting the different chemicals, and those chemicals are common compound. It's not like some strong acid or base. When we're talking about chemicals, we're really talking about any type of molecule or compound. So chemoreceptors are going to pick those up. So smell and taste are chemoreceptors. Sense of smell and taste also work together. If you've ever had a really bad cold and you can't smell food and it just doesn't taste the same, or the opposite, you smell something cooking and all of a sudden you're starving because it smells good. So smell and taste very much work together. Is that why dogs drool then? Because it smells so good? Just like, so yeah, well, they, they will drool more when they're hungry or smell food, yes. Actually, humans drool more. We produce more saliva when we're... Like if you're it's Thanksgiving and you smell all that food, you'll produce more saliva also. Hopefully you don't drool, but <laughs> so if we start looking at our nose, the smelling part is at the top of the nose. So it's going to be located up in the top area. And if we start looking at this, there are little receptor cells that line pretty much the entire top of your nose. So cribriform plate is just the bones that sit above it. Cilia are the little finger-like projections that are going to pick up the chemical. And then all of these nerve endings are olfactory nerves. And then they're spaced in between polyumnar cells, which you can see they're longer shaped cells. So olfactory receptor cells are the nerve cells that pick up uh, chemicals for smelling. The organs that would be part of your olfactory uh, system contain receptors plus the epithelial, that's those columnar cells, and they're located in the upper nasal cavity. The olfactory receptor cells are bipolar, they have more than one end neurons, and they have the hair-like cilia that are at the end of each neuron. The cilia project into the mucous membrane that lines the upper part of your nasal cavity. So in order for a chemical to be detected, those chemicals have to enter the nasal cavity, so the opening of your nose or nostrils, and then it has to be dissolved before it's actually smelled. So it's dissolved in the water, watery fluid. Uh, the mucus actually even helps a little bit with that surrounding the cilia. Uh, molecules that are odorant, or molecules that have an odor, stimulate various sets of receptor proteins. And then you smell different smells. Um, when these receptors are stimulated, their fibers are going to hook with neurons in the olfactory bulb, which are going to lie on the other side of the ethmoid bone. So basically, you're going to have your dendrites of the neuron, your receptors hang down, and then there's a little bulb kind of on the other side of the ethmoid bone. 
Impulse is then our first analyzed by those bulbs, which are specialized uh, nervous organs. And then they're going to travel along olfactory tracts or long nerve cells to the limbic system and lastly to the olfactory cortex which is found in the temporal and frontal lobe. So you smell towards, kind of towards the front of your brain. And that's where your olfactory tracts will end up. Every order, order, every odor stimulates a specific protein and that's why you smell different or odors. All those proteins are not the same. And when that happens, there's a huge influx of sodium ions. And then depolarization, which means it's going to uh, produce, the stimulus is going to produce a reaction. So if that threshold is reached, action potential is generated and you actually smell something. In your nervous system, there's a threshold that has to be reached before something will actually happen. So sodium ions, very important in your nervous system working. The brain interprets different receptor combinations and then it has a code for what these actual odors are. Olfactory's recept olfactory receptors adapt quickly and they're very selective. So we talked about before, you know, if I take, I don't know, what's something that has a strong, formaldehyde, formalin, something that has a very strong odor, my olfactory receptors are going to adapt, they're going to get used to it, they're going to quit smelling that. And even, I am, I don't smoke, I don't like the smell of smoke, but if, I'm, if you're around smoke for so long, that smell goes away. You get used to it. That's what we say. We get used to it. Well, really, those receptors are just adapting to it. But then, if I walk from the smoky room to a room where someone's cooking, my other olfactory receptors are going to smell the ham because that's a different odor. So when your olfactory receptors adapt, they adapt to that one specific odor, but then they're able to pick up a new and different odor.